Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, towards the end of my last provisions for the hereafter class, one of the students asked a question and that question uh, was related to wives and if it was um, specified that they must live with uh, the parents of their husbands. Um, now this question wasn't specific to the class alone. This is a question I've been receiving over the years and perhaps uh, even more now than before. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease matters uh, for the ummah. Ameen. Uh, the reality is my dear brothers and sisters, with regards to uh, the sharia, then there is no specific instruction regarding this. Uh, we, have, we find nothing in the Quran, nor do we find any uh, specific narration from the Prophet wasallam stating that uh, as part of the marriage contract, a female should be in the service of her mother-in-law uh, or father-in-law. Now, don't get me wrong, my dear brothers and sisters. This doesn't mean, this doesn't mean that um, one should not be in the service of uh, their father-in-law or mother-in-law because there's one thing known as the hour of rights. And there's another thing known as the R of responsibility. So I just want to clarify that now um, so that nobody takes uh, the wrong message or the wrong understanding uh, from my message uh, thus far. We have the R of rights and we have the R of responsibility. And inshallah, we will discuss this just now. But before that, I just want to highlight a cultural problem that we have uh, in many a marriage, uh, especially uh, marriages uh, between families that have uh, an Indian subcontinent origin, right? Uh, we find that uh, a lot of the shackles um, of norms come into play that negatively affect the marriage, right? I cannot uh, count the number of times females uh, have written in, wives have written in, uh, written in newlyweds uh, regarding how um, they just got married and uh, the marriage is definitely not that which they were expecting. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying uh, females are angels. I'm not saying that we don't have females who make mistakes and uh, that we don't have wives or sisters uh, or females uh, that are not upon ideals. Don't get me wrong at all, uh, dear listener and dear viewer. Um, but I'm talking about females that uh, do get married hoping to be good uh, to their in-laws, hoping uh, to serve their in-laws. But what happens is they get married into a home where uh, this culture of the wife being a slave uh, over and above being a wife exists and the reality is my dear brothers and sisters we marry wives we don't marry slaves uh, just this past week I received a message from a sister who said that uh, within um, the first few months of her marriage uh, her, her relationship with her husband became spoiled why because nothing she did was good enough for her mother-in-law and when he would come back from work uh, her mother-in-law would complain obviously and uh, as a result uh, he started disliking um, his wife why because obviously uh, you know a husband is caught in a catch-22 situation if we can say that right um, it's a tough situation to be in because here you have to be dutiful to your mother and here you have your wife who you keep asking to be dutiful to your mother or you request to be dutiful to your mother and she agrees and then um, every time you come home or every so often you come home your mother complains about your spouse so this is just a recent uh, situation uh, that uh, came through to me and when I asked uh, my fellow Muslim sister regarding um, her behavior in the home and so on and so forth she clearly said that her day starts uh, from the time she wakes and ends uh, till uh, ends in the evening you know uh, she's expected to cook she's expected to wash she's expected to clean and plus there's several other people living in the home so she has to take on the burden of doing that for um, everyone in the home and then uh, it's a family that has a lot of guests so now she's baking for them uh, and, and the baking never ends uh, and so on and so forth so no doubt this situation uh, is burdensome this is an abnormal situation this is burdensome. By no way uh, is the sister saying she doesn't want to bake, nor is she saying that she doesn't want to be of service to, um, you know, the brothers and sisters of her husband. But the situation is that the situation is unbearable, 
right? Um, it's abnormal. And here we have a situation where the husband is refusing to offer uh, a sensitive ear uh, to his wife, nor even ask his wife, you know, uh, to explain her side of things. Rather, uh, he's listening to one side of events and then um, allowing this uh, to dissolve uh, the love and happiness that he once felt for his wife. And now this is causing uh, the marriage um, to become sour. Now, from the objectives of the Sharia or that which the Sharia uh, strives to protect is uh, the relationship between husband and wife. The Sharia strives to protect this, right? And uh, Shaytan loves to break this unity. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to keep uh, this union together. Obviously, in a way that um, the two parties live with one another uh, in obedience. They do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, whilst they are together. So the Sharia strives uh, towards protecting uh, the marriage. And whilst we say, whilst we say that we do not have a specific instruction from the Quran or the Sunnah dictating that a female should live with her in-laws or dictating that a female should be in the service uh, of her in-laws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does say, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ That um, the husbands must be with their wives upon that which is good, which the Sharia uh, praises and that which uh, constitutes the noble values uh, of our norms. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has asked for. And when um, a wife enters a situation where she's being treated like a slave in the home that she is, that she is in, then uh, this goes against what the Sharia advises. And in fact, this goes against uh, the noble values of uh, our norms. And it is at this period that um, a husband should act. A husband uh, should act. In fact, the, Malik, the Maliki scholars, Rahmatullahi alayhim, have actually said that in this particular instance, if uh, the wife requests to move into her own home, then she's not sinful for doing so, uh, for, for putting forward this request. She would not be considered uh, sinful. And in no way can, can, can the husband uh, raise the matter of her uh, being sinful with um, any of the authorities because it's her right to ask for the situation if the situation is unbearable, especially since the Sharia wants to look after uh, the union of the husband and wife uh, of this couple that has come together. So the Maliki scholars have said this, Rahmatullahi alayhim, and in fact, they've actually added that if the husband uh, made a decision here to uh, separate his wife from his parents, then he also would not be considered uh, sinful, uh, inshallah, right? Given um, the explanation that I've just shared, given what the Sharia tries to protect. So, وَعَشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Allah subhanahu who Ta'ala commands us to live with our spouses uh, upon that which uh, the Sharia praises and upon those noble values of uh, our communities. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, we have allowed um, certain ills in terms of the norms uh, that we have come to know to shackle us, right? To burden us, right? To hold us down. When the Sharia came to emancipate us, uh, from that which uh, causes retrogression. We know that the Sharia came through the takthir al-masalih wa taqlil al-mafasid. The Sharia came about to increase uh, goodness, right? And to increase benefit. And it came to reduce and eradicate harm, right? This is what the Sharia came to do. So the Sharia came to emancipate us. Um, and, and, and that's why uh, even though the Sharia does not put an end to all our norms, the Sharia does put an end to those norms that put us in predicaments, harmful predicaments, those uh, values of certain norms that allow harm to increase rather than than a decrease. So understand this, uh, my dear brothers and sisters. I know every husband is also in a predicament. I'm not trying to be uh, or not show sensitivity to the situation of the husband, but what I'm putting forward to my fellow uh, brother is to um, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to do da'wah to his mother uh, and father and uh, then if need be uh, separate. Um, his wife from the home so that at least a relationship can exist uh, between uh, your wife and and your mother uh, and your father the last thing you want is your wife uh, making dua against your parents in her dua right because she's oppressed right and and uh, my advice also is based on the fact that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to uh, assist the oppressed as well as the oppressor 
right? Assist the oppressed by helping them out of the situation and assist the oppressed by doing da'wah to them, by advising them uh, the ills of their ways and, 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 and uh, inviting them towards changing uh, for the better. And no doubt with our parents, we must do so with wisdom. We must do so in uh, the best of ways. So I pray um, this particular point is understood. Now I want to move on to uh, what I said earlier pertaining to the R of rights and uh, the R of responsibility. And the reason why um, I want to highlight this is uh, because uh, what happens is um, when one part of the discussion is heard such as this, then sometimes females uh, take to heart this part of the discussion, certain wives take to heart this part of the discussion, and they understand a different message. It's important we balance out the message, right? As I said earlier, I'm not saying that since the Sharia has not directly commanded us towards being dutiful to our in-laws that we shouldn't, right? Um, because as I said, we have the hour of responsibility. Right? So sometimes it's our right to do something or not to do something, right? However, even though that may be our rights, right? A lot of the time it's our responsibility to do something or leave something. And, that's, and, and, and I call this the, you know, R versus R, right? The R of rights versus the R of responsibility. This is what I uh, call this particular discussion. I'll give you an example from the best person to have walked the face of this earth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we look at our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got married to Khadija radiallahu anha. And um, they lived together. And Khadija radiallahu anha, obviously, uh, she was well to do. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, worked uh, for her. Radiallahu anha. And um, the scholars of history like Ibn Kathir mentions in Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya and uh, Ibn Sa'ad mentions in, uh, in his Tabaqat that Khadija radiallahu anha had a child called Hind when they got married. And they go on to mention that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with this child the way a real father would be with a child. In fact, better because he was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam better than um, you know, uh, a, a real father would be with uh, his child. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was with Hind. You know, one, one may say, well, he didn't have to be with Hind like that. It was his right not to be with Hind like that. That's true. But it was his responsibility to do so. Right? That's the other R. And thus he sallallahu alayhi wa did that. And this is what brought them closer together as husband and wife. And this is what grew the love that they had uh, for one another. And this is the reality of marriage, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to grow uh, the love that we have uh, for each other. You know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the time people say we've fallen in love. And when people say they've fallen in love, in love I ask them if they're okay. <laughs> you know, because whoever, you know, fell and never got hurt, <laughs> right? You know, when you fall, you get hurt. So who said falling in love? was the right thing to do. The Sharia tells us to grow in love with one another. This is what's more sustainable and this is what is more suitable and this is what makes marriage uh, last uh, a lifetime. You know, this is what makes uh, a marriage exist in such a way that when uh, one party passes away, the other party sincerely misses them and the other party sincerely makes dua for them. It's not one of those cases where, oh, well, you know what? Uh, yes, it's sad that they passed away, Allah uh, musta'an, but perhaps there's khair in this because the situation was unbearable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. I'm sure some of you are smiling, but this is a serious situation. This is how some spouses actually uh, describe. Um, their situation when their fellow spouse passes away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and bless our marriages. I mean, so we grow in love with each other, right? The marriage between Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khadija radiallahu anha was not upon, you know, uh, a spreadsheet, a bank balance sheet, was not upon uh, what you and I may call a scorecard, right? Where there's deposits and withdrawals. Where the husband says, well, I've done so much good to you, so now I have the right to, to uh, you know, um, not look after your rights or, or, or not be responsible for so many other days. And the wife says, well, I've deposited, so I'm in surplus, and now I have the right to do the same as well. Absolutely not. And further proof of this is when um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to assist Abu Talib and reciprocate the good that Abu Talib did to him by looking after him after his grandfather passed away. We see uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taking off Abu Talib, his son Ali radiallahu an, and he brings Ali into uh, his home, the home uh, that he made with Khadija radiallahu anha. And we see no way Khadija radiallahu anha complaining. We see no way Khadija radiallahu anha, you know, requiring this long uh, discussion. 
right? There's long discussion about whether it should happen, whether it shouldn't happen, and, and how is it going to be, and we're not going to have time with each other, and so on and so forth. Perhaps, you know, these sort of discussions that might happen between spouses today. No, she happily accepted Ali coming into the home, and she was like a mother to Ali, right? Even though it was her right not to, but out of responsibility she was. This is how beautiful uh, marriages operate. So understand this, my dear sisters, as well, that whilst, you know, uh, the scholars say that it's not a right upon you as a wife to, you know, uh, be at the feet of your in-laws, even though the scholars said it's not a right, however, however, it's a responsibility, obviously upon uh, a normal way, not that which causes harm uh, to the marriage, not that which causes harm to the marriage, but upon a normal way. It shouldn't be that uh, as wives we say, well, we're we washing our hands off this because Sheikh so-and-so said that we do not have to be dutiful to our in-laws. No, um, the, the fuqaha and the scholars discuss rights. Right, because that's the books of fiqh. Uh, 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 you know, is 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 a code of law. They discussing rights. They discussing what we should look at when the marriage is is is. Uh, you know, I mean, or what we should look at um, at the bare minimal level for the marriage to be considered a marriage. Right, to be considered a functional marriage. Right. So they are discussing the minimal. It doesn't mean that they didn't say it's not your right. That they didn't advise that you should nonetheless. And in fact, they have. In fact, they have, and they have cited that it will grow the love uh, for your husband uh, towards you as well. So take into consideration this, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, in summary, in summary, our wives are wives, they're not slaves. Uh, in summary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Sharia to emancipate us, right? Uh, from the shackles of our norms and that which, which brings us uh, down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us about the people of the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send the unlettered prophet. Right, um, that will command them to towards several things, and this unlettered prophet will be a means of the shackles of their previous laws, the laws of the Torah, the laws of the Injil being lifted. Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a means of lifting the difficulties that uh, previous nations had as a result of um, or, or had uh, based on the laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them. Right, so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, describes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as with regards to previous revelations. So, what about with regards to norms? Right, norms, mad made norms. Right? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we say, min babi awla, in the first place, came to lift us uh, out of the difficulties and, um, you know, the chaos and the shackles of uh, the ills of our norms. So brothers and sisters, um, live for the sake of Allah, speak for the sake of Allah, do for the sake of Allah, live for the sake of Allah, and always remember, always remember to behave in a way that creates benefit, that creates a positive environment, and stay away from those ways that leads towards retrogression, that leads towards harm. Indeed, the Sharia only came to increase good and eradicate harm. I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and ask Allah to bless these few words and bless our marriages. And for those who are not married, ask ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with worthy marriages soon. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.